I've been meaning to make a video about this, this crazy situation. And then finally, what happened, something prompted me to do so. Paul Foss, he contributes to our Facebook group regularly. Thank you, Paul. It's great to have you. Well, he brought up an important point. This actually could be the electric car bargain of the decade. I still wouldn't buy one personally, but actually, if you're watching this video and you are in the US, I really think you should consider it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. My name is Sam Evans, and I'm coming to you from Melbourne in Australia. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Just want to say thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thanks for supporting the channel. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. You guys make this possible. Our YouTube members, you guys make this possible too. And by the way, to everyone who has donated also to our GoFundMe campaign, which is for my wife's stage four so-called incurable cancer. And let's hope it's not incurable. That's what they're saying. But we're going to do our best. She's going to do her best to try and beat this. Thank you to the, you guys who have supported her. I'll put a link in the description below to our GoFundMe campaign. This new EV, 20,000 US dollars. You know what people are saying? Oh, EVs are too expensive. No, 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 they don't, they won't work. They're too, they're too expensive. I'm not going to buy one. I've seen this comment from even EV fans many, many times. Now, you can't tell me with a straight face, it's too expensive right now to buy an EV because it isn't. It really, really isn't. Unless you're in my situation, then things might be a little different. I'm talking the average person here. If you're going to go out and buy a new car, then you really should buy this or this or this. Now, there's three three pretty compelling choices right now, in my opinion. But this one, the Chevy Bolt for twenty thousand US dollars. Now, dealers should be selling that MSRP. Some of them aren't, but maybe you'll find one that is. And if you do, then 20,000 US dollars is incredible. Frankly, I mean, if I was in the market for a car, I'd be buying the Bolt EUV. It's only a couple of thousand more, a bit more practical. Uh, it looks significantly better as well. But 20,000 US dollars and people are saying they aren't affordable. Well, they are. Now, how is the price that cheap? Well, the reality is General Motors actually discounted the price to 27,500 US dollars. Right, the tax credit is seven and a half thousand dollars. That means it's twenty thousand US dollars. Now there is one pretty strong contender to this vehicle. That is the Tesla Model Three. You'd be thinking, no, that's not a contender. Well, yeah, it is a lot more expensive. It's a lot better as well. It's a lot more expensive. But if you apply the seven and a half thousand dollar tax credit now to the Model Three, you can get one for thirty five thousand US dollars. And who would have thought you'd we'd be here saying that years after Tesla began making them? And right when there's been an insane amount of inflation right now, because every country in the world is printing money like it's going out of style. Yeah, I know it's more complex than that, but anyhow, insane inflation. And yet, 35,000 US dollars for the Model 3. So you've got a choice here. You've got the Bolt, Bolt EUV, 20,000, 22,000 respectively, then the Model 3 for $35,000. Now that's three very, very compelling choices. Pay a bit more, not that much more, but a bit more, you can get a Tesla Model Y. In fact, there's actually quite a few different options, but I know quite a few of those options appear to be real, but aren't real because you've got to go on a wait list for a year or something like that, right? Now, according to the Tesla Price Car History Tracker, which is maintained by Eldrick Bautista, the Model 3 Standard Range Plus was available for $37,000 for a month in 2021. I didn't know that. And it was available for less than $40,000 for the whole year. But in less than two, two years, that situation has changed pretty dramatically. The Tesla Model 3 is now $43,990 or $35,500 after the tax credit. The Bolt is now very, very cheap. I don't know how General Motors are doing this. It's clearly a lost leader. They're clearly not making any money on this. But hey, who cares? Go get one. The 2023 price is $27,500 or $19,995 when you apply the tax credit. Now I want to point out, you might not be able to get the tax credit. It's worth considering. You need to make around $70,000 to use the full credit and you can't make more than $150,000. So ideally you want to make more than $70,000 but less than $150,000.
or at least according to the tax office, make less than 150000 anyway. Now, you can get some of the credit if you make less than that, but just not all of it. Now, if you're married, then you need to make less than 300000 I'm going to guess if you're considering a Bolt or a Bolt EV, you don't make more than 300000 anyway as a couple, and more than 90000 US dollars as a couple combined income. You still can get the credit if you make less than that though, but just not all of it. One thing to remember though, you can actually get a $4,000 tax credit off the price of a used vehicle. So you can get that credit, $4,000 US dollars removed from the price of the Bolt or the Bolt EV if it's secondhand or from a Tesla Model 3 or from any other EV in fact. Otherwise, there is one significant drawback to the Bolt and the Bolt EV, not real great for doing road trips. The reason being, it charges at a 50 kilowatt charge rate speed, says Paul. And according to this test, well, a test I'll link to in the description, it takes 73 minutes to charge from 10% to 80%. 73 minutes, that's a bit too long for a road trip. The other thing you should consider, it uses a CCS standard. The most common CCS charges are by Electrify America. They don't have a good reputation for reliability. Luckily, Tesla superchargers are very reliable and they're opening up to other cars pretty much now. Now it hasn't happened yet in the United States, but it will be happening very soon. Now, there's one other problem. You've got to buy from a dealer, pretty much have to. That sucks, but hey, maybe you've got a great dealer. You never know. Now Paul says that the Chevrolet Bolt EUV is the latest addition to the electric vehicle market and it's quickly becoming one of the most sought after electric vehicles on the road. Now the Bolt EUV is sort of like the uh, slightly jacked up hatchback version of the Bolt. It's definitely the better better option. And with its sleek design, it does look better and good range for the price. The Bolt EUV is a game changer in the world of electric vehicles, especially at this price. I totally agree with that. One of the biggest advantages to the Bolt EUV is its range for, for the money. It's basically the cheapest car in the US right now on range per dollar paid. That's true. With a range of up to 259 miles on a single charge, the Bolt EUV can handle pretty much all your driving needs. That's a pretty long way. And the truth is, how often are you going to drive more than 250 miles in one trip? Probably pretty rarely, right? By the time you get to your destination, you can still charge it on a trickle charger. It does work and it will probably give you, you know, overnight, uh, probably charge half the pack up using a slow charger. Now, the infotainment in the Bolt EUV is meant to be pretty good and so is the ADAS. It's got advanced technology such as its infotainment system is available with semi-autonomous Supercruise suite and Supercruise is the industry's first true hands-free driver assistance feature for compatible roads. Will it really work? I don't know. I've got my doubts on that. What do you think? Have you experienced using Supercruise in the Bolt or the Bolt EV and how does it work? Let me know in the comments. I'm sure all of us would like to know that. Now in addition the Bolt EV does actually qualify for some other incentives. For example, in different states in America, North America, there are actually additional incentives on top of the government incentives. So it's worth considering that as well. In California, for example, that's the case. Now there's one proviso here. If dealers are marking the car up a lot, let's say they're marking it up by 5,000 US dollars, which I've heard is quite common, just go buy a Tesla Model 3. I think it's a no-brainer. Because if it's $5,000 more expensive, it means the Model 3 is about $10,000 more. I really think it's worth paying that extra $10,000 if you can stretch that far. But if you can get one for $20,000, I mean for you know $27,500 before the tax credit is applied, then it's a really amazing option. And frankly, you've got to say, this is the kind of price you would think, oh, maybe that's the case in China. Maybe you get one for this, this price in China. This is basically the China price, right? But this is in America. And this is in a period of time where we're seeing insane inflation. How can this thing be so cheap? It's insane. You know what? It's amazing. And I love it. General Motors, thank you. But all I have to say is, Mary, you did it. No, I'm joking. Mary didn't do it. <laughs> Mary, you're making this car, but we need a lot more of them. 70,000 a year, it's peanuts. We need 700,000 a year. Ramp up production then you've done it. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments.